If I can only have one bourbon for the rest of my life, what's it gonna be? Let's find out. What is going on everybody? Nathan here with the Everyday Drinker, bringing you guys a brand new video. Today we are finally doing a blind. Holy cow, it has been way too long and I cannot wait to get into this one. This one right here was a challenge by the Bourbon Hutch. Go check him out. Awesome guy, awesome content. But before we get into the details of it, make sure you guys drop the like, leave a comment down below on what your number one whiskey would be uh, that you could only have for the rest of your life. And if you enjoy the content a lot, make sure you smash that subscribe button. We're on the road to 20,000 subscribers. We just passed 6,000 and I cannot thank you guys enough for the love and support. Check out the store for your everyday drinker merchandise and check out the Patreon. And uh, you know, let's get into the nitty gritty of the, today's video. So the Bourbon Hutch, he did a challenge, a one bourbon for the rest of your life uh, challenge. And this bourbon has to be something that's readily available. It can't be a super allocated bottle. And you know, he made a good point. Don't want to do anything that's super expensive because if it's only one bourbon, that's you're spending a lot of money on this one bourbon that you're always going out and picking up. So for me, we have five bottles that I really, really love that are somewhat attainable with a little bit of hunting going and traveling a little bit, and they're all relatively under $75, which I felt was a, a, a an okay price point to keep it under. And I also love that under 120 above 105 proof point so that's where all five of these bottles fall we've got all the way to our left we've got a penelope toasted i love my toasted bottles of bourbon so this one right here it is the central jersey bourbon society pick but it's coming in at 115 proof so that is absolutely perfect up next, we've got Wild Turkey Rare Breed, 116.8 proof. This is coming in at like that under $60 mark. Next up, we've got the 1920 from Old Forester Prohibition Style, 115 proof, $65 bottle. Over here on our right, we've got Blue Note. Now, you guys know how much I love Blue Note. Um, this is the Adelphia store pick. This bad boy's coming in at 117.2 proof. And then all the way to the right, we've got the Russell's Reserve Private Select. This one is coming in at 10 years old, and it's 110 proof. All of these have been poured. They have been blinded. I've got no idea what is what. You guys will see the letters in front. I, I don't know if you guys can read that or not. I have no idea at this point. Um, but, you know, enough jibber-jabber. Let's start the blind and see which one of these five bourbons is going to be the only bourbon that I can drink for the rest of my life. And we're starting all the way over here to the left with no letter, not number, A. So let's see what this bad boy's got to offer. Quick noses, quick palates. We're gonna see where these fall in and then we fast forward right to left. Nice chocolatey caramel. It's like it's a, a chocolate covered caramel in a way. And you guys will know what I'm drinking. If you, if you don't know that already, you will know what I'm drinking. You'll see it somewhere on the screen. I like this nose a lot. This is, a, it's got a little fruitiness, earthy. It's got some proof to it. This will be the first sip of the day. Very nice, warm fruits in this. Let's get into the palate. Earthy, sweet, caramel, little bit of brown sugar. Really, really nice sip. Doesn't blow your palate out. All of these are very, very close in proof. And you know, as much as I love barrel proof, that just blows you out too much. And I don't think, as much as I do love it, I don't think I could do it every single day. This is a really, really nice pour, whatever is in A, but let's move on to letter B. B is so different. This is like, oh man, it's got a little bit more of a brown sugar aspect. This is darker and richer. Oh wow, that nose is so nice. This is so much, in my opinion, B's nose is leaps and bounds better than A. Oh, that's so good. Oh my God, that is absolutely delicious. It's richer, it's a little bit more complex. You get a little bit more of a, just this like, this darkness that comes through on B. A was warm and bright, but B is just a little bit more rich and fuller in my opinion. So I think I'm automatically just gonna swap that right now. Let's move on to C. Nice light vanilla, very, very sweet vanilla. 
a little oakiness, a little butterscotch in there too. Like this is the this is a very nice sweet nose. It smells light and sweet. I get that butterscotch. That butterscotch is there. Let's get into the palate. A nice oaky presence, a little bit more than the other two. It tastes a little younger, getting a little bit more of a, a grainy note in there. But it has this really nice baking spice that comes through that is really, really well balanced with that oakiness, that dry. It's, it's dry, but it's also really, really nice. It's easy to go to. Whatever this is, it's drinking under that proof. And I really, really enjoy whatever is in C. I don't know if it's better than A though. So let's move over to D. D's got a little funk. D's got a little marshmallow, sweet, little cherry note in this. It smells a lot like whatever A was. Yeah, D and A smell very, very similar. Dark cherry in this though. Let's get in the palette. I don't know if it's better than C though. It's rich, it's sweet. It's got the nicest mouthfeel out of the four so far. It coated my entire palate. My tongue is still like really trying to dive into what we just had there. D is really, really nice. But I think that the warm brightness from C made it a little bit better. No. D is definitely a little bit better than C. And uh, we're moving on to E, the last of the five and before we fast forward through this. Whoa, that's, that is dark and stormy. That's got a nice, like, just rich oak presence on this. It's like, it's got a, a very nice, sweet, charred, like, this one might be the, 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 the toasted, but ah, I don't know. Nice marshmallow note in this. A little mesquite note. That nose is beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Cheers to E. Rich baking spices, clove, really, really dry cinnamon. It's got that nutmeg. It's got a little bit of a, a, um, a pie crust. There's a little bit of buttery note in there. That is really, really good. I'm going to jump this up two spots automatically moving into the fast forward round because that is phenomenal. But before we fast forward, make sure you guys leave that like. Leave the comment down below if you think that your favorite is going to come out on top before we get to the finals. And if you're brand new, like I said, drop that subscribe button. But let's get going. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have our final lineup. We have C, D, A, E, B. For how good E is, I wanted to put it above B, but B, in my opinion, had this just a little bit more enjoyable flavor profile that you could go to every single day. I don't know if E is something that you would really want to go for every single day. It was absolutely delicious, but I think for a more traditional bourbon profile, whatever's in B is something that I would probably tend to want to lean towards on an everyday basis or whenever I wanted to drink basis compared to E. E would be something that is something you go to like once a week or something. Like it's that one bourbon that you're like, oh, I can't wait to have that. But unfortunately, it's... It, with the one bourbon only challenge, E falls to whatever is in B. So let's find out what is in fifth place in letter C. Letter C, let's start all the way to the left, <coughs> is going to go to the Blue Note pick. Now, that's so sad. That's so, so sad. Blue Note coming in the last place. But hey, 
It is an absolute banger, banger pour. I love Blue Note so much. And uh, once these start hitting the shelves a lot more, we will most likely add a bunch more Blue Note to the collection. Let's find out what came in fourth place. Fourth place goes to D. And was D over here? No. 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 That means Russell's Reserve. Private Select came in fourth place. That's interesting. All right, that means we've got three heavy hitters here in the top three. And letter A came in third place, and I think I remember seeing that right here. No! That means Wild Turkey Rare Breed got third place. And letter B in first place, we've got Old Forester 1920 Prohibition Style, and that means that E, in second place, went to the Penelope Toasted. That means my everyday drinker, my, my, every, my one and only bourbon that I would have to go to that is readily available and on the cheaper side, you know, under 70 bucks, you can find Old Forester 1924, and I can find this almost every store I go into. I am not upset about that whatsoever. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. This was an absolute blast of a video to record. Let me know down in the comments below what your number one bourbon would be if you could only have one. And if you enjoy the content, make sure you smash that subscribe button. But until next time, this has been Nathan with The Everyday Drinker. Cheers.